All right, let's finish up with sanctions regimes here. So the next bit is we're going to go through the major players. I started the last video with Canada, but we're going to go through the major players and their sanctions programs. There probably will be questions on this, so let's do. So Australia. Australia's sanctions regime. A good thing to point out this, though, is that the U.S. OFAC sanctions is the most important, but there are other sanctions out there. I think that we're going to learn a lot more about that and how that plays. So Australia's sanctions regime consists of UN Security Council sanctions, including counterterrorism sanctions and limited autonomous sanctions concerning Iran, Libya, Myanmar, North Korea, Syria, Russia, Ukraine, and several other territories. Australia implements autonomous sanctions under the Autonomous Sanctions Act, Act of 2011. Australia's general sanctions policy is set by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, DFAT. The Australian Transaction Reports and Analysis Centre, Austrac, is also engaged in regulating financial institutions and ensuring compliance with Australian law. Like the United States and the European Union, Australia has implemented a targeted sanctions and a partial embargo of the Crimea region following Russia's annexation of Crimea and Sevastopol in March 2014. Australian sanctions generally do not have any extraterritorial effects. Okay, China. China is a permanent member of the UN Security Council. China takes part in the formulation of international sanctions through UN Security Council resolutions and implements those resolutions through the various domestic laws, regulations and directives aimed at Chinese persons companies and financial institutions. China also implements limited autonomous sanctions and financial you know, sanctions. Um, where is it? Sanctions through the UN Security Guards resolution implement those resolutions through various domestic laws, regulations and directives aimed at Chinese persons and companies and financial institutions. China also implements limited autonomous sanctions concerning issues such as terrorism. Interesting. The Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the MFA, is principally responsible for oversight of Chinese sanctions and promulgates sanctions through official announcements and through other government departments, such as the People's Bank of China, the PBOC, and the Ministry of Public Security, MPS. The Chinese government may from time to time exert economic pressure through informal directives aimed at state-owned enterprises and limited commercial boycotts, through such initiatives that do not impose generally to the, to push to the public, Chinese sanctions generally do not have extraterritorial effects. So I see that with Australia right now. Australia, uh, China's put some sanctions, or basically on Australian wine, and sp uh, Australian meat, and sp Australian barley. So they've put sanctions more like a trade embargo. So some things they can do there. Francois. France implements both EU and UN sanctions, but may also establish sanctions on its own. The French Treasury Directorate, which is in part of the Ministry of the Economy and Finances, has dedicated website to describe and explain the different sanctions regimes and how to apply the French entities. It has issued a code, um, and uh, was it the Code de Bonne Conduite, last updated 2016, and various tables which are recaps of sanctions currently in place. The French Treasury also maintains an update list of applicable sanctions through country by country and information on military equipment and dual use goods, exporters and other legal entities that might be concerned by sanctions must report to a designated service. However, they fir must first conduct their own due diligence and provide their conclusions. Exporters and other legal entities should address their requests for licenses or exemptions to an office of the French Treasury. Cool. Germany. Germany implements both UN and EU sanctions. It also has its own autonomous sanctions that are implemented primarily through the Foreign Trade Payments Act and the Foreign Trade and Payments Ordinance. Okay, so Germany, you probably know about this stuff, which is enacted as part of a basis of Foreign Trade and Payments Act. The Federal Ministry of Economics and Technology, BMWI, is responsible for applying the economics and teaching. BMWI has a responsibility for applying Germany's autonomous sanctions that does not primarily by coordinating with the Federal Office of Economics and Export Control. <laughs> cool. And the Central Bank of Germany, which is the Deutsche Bundesbank, BAFTA, BAFA, not BAFTA, BAFA, is primarily responsible for the licensing and certifications required for the export of certain controlled goods. BAFTA, among other requirements, collects information on the applicant's experience in defense activities, industrial activity, written commitments and other information to assess the applicant's reliability and federal financial supervisory authority. The Federal Ministry of Economics and Technology supervises financial institutions. Cool. 
Hong Kong SAR, Hong Kong Special Administrative Region uh, implements UN Security Council sanctions, including counterterrorism sanctions under the direction of the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, with the exception of any UN sanctions targeting the Chinese mainland. All right, so it's different from the Chinese mainland, technically. Hong Kong does not have an autonomous sanctions regime. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. So it's directed by the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Okay, so I'm not really into Hong Kong, China stuff. It's a bit complex, but let's go through. Multiple agencies share the responsibility for the administration and enforcement of sanctions in the SAR. These include the Chief Executive Department of Justice, Customs and Excise Department, Commerce and Economic Development Bureau, Trade and Industry Department, Hong Kong Monetary Authority, which is the financial regulator, Securities and Futures Commission, SFE, and other bodies that are responsible for oversight of companies and financial institutions in compliance with Hong Kong AML, CFT, and UN sanctions laws and regulations. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority has increased oversight of sanctions compliance by authorized financial institutions in recent years, including by undertaking a thematic review of sanctions name screening technology given the wide variety of foreign financial institutions operating in Hong Kong. Many financial institutions in the special uh, Hong Kong special new region uh, are required to or choose to comply with US, EU, or other domestic sanctions regulators. Yeah, because they just you have to be in that framework. If you're not in that framework, they, Hong Kong loses its edge as a financial sort of city, basically. India, in, let's do India. Generally speaking, India's economic sanctions framework is less extensive than other countries in Asia. All right. A lot of things in India are like that, but it functions. India also retains strong economic ties to countries such as Iran, which are subject to various other international sanctions regimes. Like other United Nations members, India implements UN Security Council resolutions, in particular anti-terrorism sanctions. But India does not have a unilateral or autonomous sanctions. Indian sanctions laws are generally applied within India and do not have extraterritorial territorial effects. The Reserve Bank of India, RBI, and the country's central bank publishes notifications to financial institutions in India concerning updates to relevant sanctions lists. Reserve Bank of India is also the country country's primary AML CFT regulator. Okay, so that's interesting. So the Reserve Bank of India, their central bank, is their AML CFT regulator as well. So it does everything, the sanctions, which is, you know, for a big country like India, doesn't know they're taking it too seriously. All right, Japan. Japan implements both the UN Security Council sanctions and a certain autonomous sanctions which are applicable to Japanese persons and companies in Japan's territory. Notably, Japan imposes unilateral sanctions targeting North Korea, which may be coordinated with sanctions by other countries such as the United States. The Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of the Economy, Trade Industry, both take part in overseeing Japan's sanctions regime. Um, Ministry of Finance, which is Japan's principal AML CFT regulator, also oversees compliance with sanctions by financial institutions in Japan as part of their overall AML CFT programs. Japanese law enforcement also compiles a list of anti-social forces, which include the names of organized crime members, Yakuza maybe, and these lists are made available to financial institutions in Japan for the purposes of customer screening. So maybe if you're in Japan, you might be able to tell me this, you know. Do they have a Yakuza screening system? Interesting. New Zealand. New Zealand implements uh, UN Security Council sanctions through its country's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, in fact. Uh, New Zealand sanctions are generally applicable to New Zealand citizens, companies incorporated in New Zealand. So if you incorporate in New Zealand, like Kim.com, you have New Zealand sanctions. Um, and activities taking place in New Zealand's territory. New Zealand does not does not have unilateral or autonomous sanctions except travel bans. Yeah, so New Zealand's a bit more neutral than Australia or the UK, mainly because they're very protective of their relationship with China, but I think that's going to be under pressure in the future. And their lack of sanctions, lack of extraterritorial effects. Additional oversight of sanctions compliance may be provided by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, the Financial Markets Authority, and the Department of Internal Affairs, which share responsibility for oversight of New Zealand's AML CFT framework. Although not a member of the United Nations, Taiwan generally implements and enforces UN Security Council sanctions. I'll oh, tell you Taiwan now. Taiwan usually, uh, so this is interesting, the Taiwan's different than China. So although not a member of the United Nations, that's a big thing with Taiwan. Taiwan generally implements and enforces UN Security Council sanctions through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Bureau of Foreign Trade. 
Of note, Taiwan issued a total ban on trade with North Korea in September 2017 in response to heightened US and US, UN and UN sanctions against North Korea. Furthermore, as a member of the Asia-Pacific Group and Financial Action Task Force, regional style body, Taiwan is obligated to adopt international anti-proliferation and counter-terrorism sanctions. The BFT is primarily responsible for reviewing and approving license requests and issuing regulations and guidance concerning Taiwan sanctions and export controls. Like in many countries, Taiwan maintains a list of commodities such as dual-use goods. This list is published by the BFT, the Financial Supervisory Commission. FC, FSC has oversight of Taiwanese financial institutions compliance and sanctions as part of AML CFT regulations. All right, let's keep going. Singapore, big financial center. Singapore, like most, so you can see here, it just sort of talks about what they do, whether they're unilateral or not, uh, who the regulators are, who the AML CFT regulators are, etc. Singapore, like most Asia Pacific countries, implements UN Security Council sanctions and limited autonomous sanctions. Financial sanctions are administered by the Monetary Authority of Singapore, MAS, under the Terrorism Suppression of Financing Act. Singapore has the ability to designate terrorist subjects through the Inter-Ministry Committee on Terrorism Designation. Singapore sanctions generally do not have extraterritorial effects. However, as an important regional trading hub, Singapore is influenced by many international scenarios. Sanctions re re regimes, including US and EU sanctions that apply to many international financial institutions operating in the country. South Korea. South Korea implements autonomous sanctions under the prohibition of financing of offenses, public intimidation, and proliferation of air weapons of Mass Destruction Act, amended in 2014 from the original act. Okay. Under the act, the you don't really see much in like South Korea with AML. It must do it, but you don't hear much about it more. Under the act, the Financial Service Commission may designate entities that are found to be related to terrorism financing. So love is terrorism financing with sanctions. You can see the connection here. That's why they say AML CFT because they talk about terrorism financing a lot. South Korea is a financial supervisory service it regulates financial institutions and the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Economy is responsible for trade restrictions. Okay. Switzerland implements, so we've got Switzerland next, last one. Switzerland implements both UN sanctions and its own autonomous sanctions. It's a federal act on the implementation of international standards, the Embargo Act or EMBA is a set of regulations enabling it to enact sanctions ordered under the UN, the EU, or significant trading partners. Under EMBA, compulsory measures allow it to a directly or indirectly restrict transactions involving goods and services, payments and capital transfers, and the movement of persons, as well as scientific, technological, cultural exchange, and B, including prohibitions, licensing, and reporting obligations, as well as other restrictions of rights under the Federal Council. Exceptions may be allowed for humanitarian activities, such as food and medicine. Those persons who are impacted either indirectly or directly by the measures are subject to inspection of their business premises without prior notice during working hours for the examination of documentation and other relevant information. Switzerland's State Secretariat of Economic Affairs maintains its sanctions list, which can be found online. So there is sanctions that are online. Okay.